As a young child, Pamela Carter was imbued with a sense of hard work and dedication to the public good. My father was a coach. My mother was very much active in the PTA. We were very active in our parish. And so we always knew that we were going to be involved in service to others. In high school, Pamela took a trip that further crystallized her sense of duty. It so happened that Martin Luther King Jr. was going to be in Chicago at a march. And so we decided to go, and we did. And that march was extraordinary and terrifying at the same time. And I remember all of a sudden somebody started, they started throwing rocks at us. And that was the first time, I think the only time outside of Dr. King's assassination that he was actually injured during a protest march. We kept marching and then, then we locked arms. And then we started to sing, We Shall Overcome. It's a moment that has stayed with her ever since and one of many that fueled her early days in social work. But Pamela knew a law degree would give her the tools to make social change happen. And so I thought if I had both, I could actually move the needle a little further and really make a bigger difference. And Indiana University School of Law had an evening school. And at that time I was married with one child and another one on the way. So it was very intense during that period of time. Indiana University McKinney School of Law gave me the opportunity to advance my goal of becoming a lawyer. She fought cases for the United Auto Workers and worked for the state of Indiana before serving as Indiana's Attorney General from 1993 to 1997. Obviously, saying that Pam Carter has had a distinguished career is an understatement. She's probably best known for being the first African-American woman to serve as, an, as a state attorney general in the United States. The shattered glass image uh and the, the fact that we can put her as a definition in the dictionary beside the phrase shattered glass um, is just extraordinary. Right away, she won victories for the people of Indiana, bringing in unprecedented four cases before the United States Supreme Court. One would be unusual if an attorney general office anywhere in the, in the United States got one. And we won all four of those cases and we won what's called the U.S. Attorney's General Best Brief Award. It was called the Indiana Rule because we swept. It was a blind test that the U.S. Supreme Court justices look at the best briefs of all the briefs that they received the year. And our office, unknown, unbeknownst to them, won all four. But after a brutal political campaign and a cancer diagnosis while in office, Pamela decided not to run for Attorney General again. Instead, she joined Cummins Corporation, eventually becoming president of distribution, overseeing a team of over 13,000 people. So really her trajectory, you know, starting with social work, then going into law, going into um, government, private practice, business, almost spans the range of things that one can do with a law degree. And Pamela Carter's life of service continues to this day. She sits on numerous boards and makes philanthropic contributions to many organizations, including the McKinney School of Law. Whether it's through standing as a role model, whether it's through philanthropy, whether it's coming and speaking with and meeting students, that's what really strikes me about Pam Carter. When I think of her, I think about helping others and caring about students. Pam Carter is one of my favorite people. And it's not because of politics, it's because of the person that she is. Uh, she's honest. She's hardworking, she's loyal, she's family oriented, she cares about her friends, and most importantly, she cares about making a difference with her life and knows that that involves a giving back, not just taking selfishly. To live in the United States of America is a privilege, but it's, it has obligations. And one of those is to continue to live at the highest level of excellence so that you're a better neighbor and citizen but for all her monumental achievements, instilling that inherited sense of service in her children may be her greatest source of pride. My family. I've been married for over 50 years to my husband, Michael Carter, whom I met in college. And we have two great children, my, our son, Michael Jr., and our daughter, Marcia, and they have families. And I'm watching our children who are taking on many roles in the community and they're giving back. And we're also watching our grandchildren, even at young ages, giving back. I know that the legacy of my 
great grandparents, my grandparents, my mom is really just living through us. It's still intergenerational.